All right, ladies and gentlemen and all people, this is the video that you have all been waiting for because what we're going to do is we are going to figure out how can we take these teeny tiny little itty bitty atoms and relate them to masses that we can use. Okay, so this is going to introduce something called the mole concept. And the way to start this traditionally has you thinking about all the different kinds of definitions for the word mole. How many can you come up with? This is my pre-class activity, okay? How many can you think of? A mole is probably what? The animal? Um, you might be thinking of a couple other things. So if you actually consult the Webster's Dictionary, you'll see that there are nine definitions for the word mole. Kind of crazy, right? So one is any various insectivorous mammal living chiefly underground. So this adorable little guy right here, the animal. All right, insectivorous, meaning it eats insects. Uh, two, you might think of a spy, a double agent that works within a government or intelligent agencies. And if you um, know any of the old cartoons on Mad TV, um, Spy versus Spy. This is what animal? A mole. Look at that. Okay, definition number three is a piece of machinery, and it's really large and powerful, and it's used to construct tunnels. So, yeah, like underground, it's this great big giant huge uh, mole thing right here. You might think of a mole as a blemish. Okay, a uh, slightly dark color or elevated skin, sometimes hairy if you're a witch. This is the lovely Cindy Crawford, who um, was one of the first supermodels that had an imperfection. Um, yes, Marilyn Monroe had also a mole, but she's the first supermodel when um, in the 90s they were really looking for, you know, certain types of uh, quote-unquote beauty. And she had a, <gasps> you know, a blemish. Goodness. All right, a uh, fifth definition is a massive structure, especially one made of stone that is used as breakwater or a pier. If you saw the movie Free Willy, this is what Willy um, sails over at the end of the movie. Spoiler alert, sorry. Number six, the anchorage or harbor protected by such a structure. So this can also be called the mole, like all protected in here. And I'm sure you've seen these at the shore. Um, number seven is a fleshy mass in the uterus formed by a hemorrhagic dead ovum. Uh, yeah, I did not include a picture of that. You can let your imagination do that. Um, mm -hmm. Number eight is quite a delicious definition. This is mole, okay, where you have a different uh, accent and pronunciation. It is usually like a Caribbean type um, seasoning made with uh, chocolate. It's usually very savory and um, it's used on top of turkey or chicken. And if you haven't had it, I highly suggest that you get yourself some mole because it is delish. And number nine, Okay, is the definition that we're going to use. That is an amount. It's an amount. It is a quantity. A quantity of a substance like atoms, molecules, or, oh, look, my ions, my favorite word, and other elementary units that atoms are counted in. The number is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd and is affectionately known as Avogadro's number. Named after this stud right here, that is Amadeo Avogadro, who came up with all of those calculations. You might recognize him from the Trader Joe's avocado guacamole to go boxes. Yes, he is the face of the awesome uh, guacamole. <laughs> Get it, mole? Um, for Trader Joe's. And that is because he came up with the calculations, the proportions for. Um, for this number, for the amount that we need. All right. 
So one of the things that you'll see is that mole day is an actual day during a uh, national chemistry week, which is usually the third or so week in October. National chemistry day is October 23rd. Any guesses as to why? Well, it's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So October 23rd for that reason. Sometimes we also celebrate mini mole day and mini mole day would be june 2nd why because six and oh two so yeah it depends on how finals and stuff work out all right so now that we have this defined as a mole let's try to wrap our head around this idea okay so why do we need a mole because we measure things in quantities. Like if you were to order donuts or get cans of soda or get computer paper or order or buy, purchase jelly beans or order lunch meat, you use different systems of counting or measuring. So either like quantities or a mass if the system is way too, or if the items are way too small in order to get an amount. All right, so obviously we order donuts by the uh, dozen, okay, dozen meaning 12. A case of soda has like 24. A ream of paper would be 500 sheets. You don't go to the, you know, checkout counter or on Amazon and be like, uh, I would like five sheets of paper, please. No, they're going to send you a, a ream of paper, okay? Um, but sometimes it's not really, you know, beneficial to order something by a quantity you know could you imagine if you're like can i have eight dozen jelly beans they'd be like what you crazy you order them by the pound or can i have two dozen slices of turkey at the counter absolutely not you get 25 slices in a pound you order by the half pound you can't get flour i would like 1800 granules yeah you're not going to do that all right, so sometimes we have to count and use mass. And that's where the stud comes in, Amadeo Avogadro. All right, and around the time that our country was being developed, he was born in 1776. He, um, experimentally determined later on in his life in the 1800s how much a mole of anything was and he has this really long number it's not like pi but it's pretty long 6.022 so you'll see it sometimes taken out to three decimal places there but affectionately we really only use 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd so let's wrap around Let's wrap our brains around how big that number is okay 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd is 602 with 21 zeros after it. And that is a whole heck of a lot of zeros. All right, this is why we use scientific notation. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, we need three more so that we don't omit anything. Okay, huge gargantuan number. It's time to pay it some respect. Okay, so this is how much one mole of anything is. So how big is this? If we took a bunch of paper clips, how big would it be? Would it go around the earth? How big would um, a marshmallow mountain be? Okay, so these are like the one inch size marshmallows for like you use for s'mores. Okay, would it cover the United States? How about a marble mountain? Would it be like Mount Everest? What about a stack of pennies? Would it stack up to the moon? Okay, so yeah, the answer is yes, but a lot bigger. A mole of paper clips linked around, one inch paper clips, goes around the earth four trillion times. Yeah, crazy amount of times. Okay, a mole of those large marshmallows does cover the United States, but it's for 650 miles deep. Wow. Yeah, a mole of marbles is the size of Mount Everest, or 116 of them. Okay, huge, unbelievable amounts. A mole of pennies does go to the moon, but it goes back and forth a couple times. 1.55 times 10 to the 12th times, that's a quadrillion. Yeah, that's after trillion. All right, a lot of times. So how much is a mole of water molecules going to be? Is it going to be all the oceans? Is it going to be all of the 
uh, glaciers and all of that? No. A mole of water is going to be 18 milliliters. That's about two tablespoons. Okay, it's 18.02 grams. The density of water is one gram per one milliliter as we went over. Okay, so of these molecules that are so tiny, you have to have this huge number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, so that you can see them. That's how small molecules are. You have to have this huge amount in order for it to be workable and usable. So you might be thinking to yourself, well, what about the paper clips? They're small. So are marshmallows and marbles and pennies. Yeah, they're small, but they can be seen with the naked eye. So if you have a mole of them, okay, it's also going to be a large amount because you can see them. Okay, one mole represents a quantity. All right. And they are going to be different sizes. Okay, if you get lost with the idea of a mole, think of a mole as a dozen and how you use a dozen to count things. Okay, but a dozen of everything isn't going to weigh the same. Okay, a dozen uh, pennies does not equal the same as a dozen bowling balls. Okay, they weigh different amounts. So you're going to see that um, a mole of each substance isn't necessarily going to weigh the same, okay? A mole of iron is 55.85 grams. A mole of sulfur is 3207 grams. Iron's number 26 on the periodic table. It has 26 protons, 27-ish uh, neutrons, and 26 electrons. Sulfur is 16. So it makes sense that it's going to be bigger, okay? Um, if you take a look here, this is a mole of zinc, this is a mole of aluminum, this is a mole of iron, and this is a mole of copper. They are not all the same. Okay, 55.85 grams for our mole of iron here, 3207 grams for our mole of sulfur. All of these weigh different amounts, but they're very specific numbers. So where are these numbers coming from? You guessed it, from our bestie, our periodic table. And we're going to talk about that in the next video.